Greetings to all. In the last lecture, we have started the rotor core design, right? And we have discussed the how to select the number of rotor slots and how to select the air gap length. In this lecture, we will continue the rotor design and we will discuss on the rotor winding, how to select the number of bars and how to select the bar thickness and uh, bar cross sectional area and bar current and etc. First, I will start with the rotor winding. Okay. We will find the number of bars. The number of bars. is equals to number of rotor slots nb equals to qr okay then we will calculate the bar current first okay for calculating the bar current let us consider the mmf whatever we are sending from the stator side Okay, in between air gap is there, this is air gap and at the rotor side we are seeing rotor MMF, whatever the MMF we are sending at the stator side, it is a combination of two parts, one is with respect to the air gap MMF for establish, establishing the flux at the air gap. And second thing is, second part with respect to the stator MMF is torque component. Okay. Stator MMF is a combination of the MMF required to establish the flux at the air gap and MMF required to deliver the required torque. Okay. If we will take the rotor MMF is equals to MMF at the stator side into some ray gamma MMF factor, MMF factor okay. because in a practical machine we have the air gaps there can be a loss also this gamma MMF represents the factor to match the rotor MMF and stator MMF. Okay. So, the MMF at the stator side is a combination of air gap flux plus torque component. Okay. MMF is nothing but N into I, right? the number of conductors or number of bars at the rotor side is nothing but N B and current flowing through each bar is I B and MMF at the stator side will be number of conductors into current flowing through each conductor okay, into gamma MMF. Here Z is nothing but 2 into number of tons per phase into total number of phases into I, uh, I phase into gamma MMF. Generally, gamma MMF will be 80 to 90 percent of yeah, 80 to 90 percent it is a factor. So, from this equation we can find the bar current. Bar current is nothing but 2 into N phase into M into I phase into gamma MMF divided by number of conductors or number of bars at the rotor side. Okay. From here we know the bar current I B R M S. Okay. Here I B R M S we can take I phase R M S. So, I, I B R M S current we know from this equation number 30 I think in yeah, yeah this is equation number 30. 
once we know the bar current then area of bar we can calculate it right okay area of the bar or cross sectional area of the bar is equals to i bar current rms divided by jb current density of the rotor bar current density of the rotor bar we have to calculate depend we have to select depends upon the which type of bars we are utilizing for aluminum bars or copper bars we can select 5 to 7 ampere per rotor ampere per mm square okay for designing the rotor in order to increase the uh, efficiency gamma mmf should be increased okay gamma mmf factor we are considering 0.8 to 0.9 right for increasing the efficiency the gamma mmf factor should be increased okay then the maximum current we can get at the rotor side if the maximum current we are getting at the rotor side then the maximum mechanical output power we can get at the output side eventually we can increase the efficiency now we will see how the bar current waveform looks like from that bar current waveform we will visualize what is the entering current and entering areas so here we can see the squirrel cage rotor this is the skewed rotor with n number of rotor bars and whatever the ending side this is the end ring end ring depth will be this much and end ring length will be this portion okay if we will see here this is the thickness of the end ring and this is the width of the width or depth of the end ring and this is the thickness of the end ring that we can see here so the depth will be this one de and thickness will be this one after the bar uh, length whatever it may be the length it is coming after the bar that is the thickness of the uh, end ring. Now we will calculate what is the current flowing through the end ring and what is the thickness of the end ring. In order to find the current flowing through the end ring we will see the rotor structure first. Rotor has like this n number of bars right and this is the entering portion consider here current is flowing through the all bars and half of the bars we will see the remaining current so the bar consists of all currents right combination of all current or if we will see it will be a structure of the resistances in this manner the current at this particular point will be combination of all branch currents right here let us say ib ib is nothing but i1 plus i2 right at this particular node similarly if we will consider here one node the current with respect to this five bars will come together and flowing with respect to this particular point okay this particular node similarly current is splitting into two parts okay current can go in two ways in a end ring and here entering in from both sides because it is a circular structure right the bar current will be in this manner and end ring is carrying current combination of all bar currents so if we will draw the bar current waveform i b ok so with respect to the 
bars, we will see the bar current in this manner. these are the induced currents okay induced bar currents with respect to the rotor structure now end ring is nothing but combination of all these currents right if i will consider the average current with respect to the half cycle all currents are in upward direction i am assuming the average current will be same with respect to the bars all bars here current will be in opposite direction okay this is for bar current average currents now the entering current is nothing but combination of all bar currents right where we will see the maximum current means the combination of all these currents will flow from this direction to this direction right or half of the current is flowing in this direction and half of the current is flowing in this direction but on one particular junction we will see the maximum current right here so at this particular point we will see the maximum entering current and it will be varying with respect to the sinusoidal manner in a same way like bar current but why it is 90 degree phase shift in means at this particular point only we are seeing the maximum current this is the bar current sorry entering current i entering current okay so whatever the current is flowing through each bar is splitting into two parts and flowing in the end ring okay now the current flowing through the end ring is equals to how many number of bars are coming with respect to one uh, pole okay this is with respect to one pole right one pole pitch so with respect to one pole pitch how many number of bars are coming that number of that many number of bars by two right i entering current is nothing but this current is splitting into two parts and here entering into the two parts and flowing through the bars and leaving in two parts right if requires we can draw the diagram so here bar current is entering here and leaving in two directions and entering also in two directions right consider here current is entering and here also current is entering so current is entering into this bar in this way here leaving from the bar in this way similarly all bars having some current and the total entering current is nothing but ib into the bars per pole okay number of bars per pole bars per pole by 2 okay so here bars per pole is nothing but number of bars is nothing but nr by p into 2 this is ib current flowing through the each bar let us consider this current is ib maximum so the total current is flowing through the end ring is nothing but ib maximum into nr by 2p now we have to calculate the what is end ring current maximum since the ir is a sinusoidal quantity entering current to find the maximum value 
i r maximum is equals to 2 by pi i b maximum into n r by 2 p. This will give n r into i b maximum divided by p into pi. This is equation number thirty one. This is the maximum current flowing through the end ring. Now, what is the end ring current in terms of RMS? To find the area, we require the RMS value, right? I E R is equals to RMS. Both sides we have the peak values. So, by root two, by root two, we can do it. And N R into I B RMS by number of poles into pi. This is equation number thirty-two. Okay. So here both I E R as well as I B. bar current and end ring currents are sinusoidal quantities once we know the rms current of the end ring we can find the cross sectional area of the end ring ac er equals to in terms of ier rms by current density of end ring so current density of end ring we have to select depends upon the aluminum or copper which type of material we are utilizing to design the end ring based on that thing we have to select the current density okay from here a area of cross section with respect to the uh, end ring is known but from the design we can see here rotor structure here area of the end ring is equals to this one is the depth Uh, into thickness right depth is nothing but de and thickness is nothing but te right depth of the end ring into thickness of the end ring x axis into y axis length is nothing but the area so from these two equations we can find the der and ter but these two are the two unknowns right we know the area of cross section but two unknowns we have so one value either depth of the end ring or thickness of the end ring we have to assume one value if we are assuming der then calculate the ter okay one value we can assume and other value we can calculate it this is the way to calculate the bar current end ring current and area of the end ring and area of the bar okay we can see here the bar currents will be sinusoidal and it uh, these currents are induced depends upon the rotating magnetic fields i am repeating it and average current if i'll consider almost same in all bars if i'll assume then the currents will be in this manner this currents entering in one bar is leaving into two parts in one direction in other direction ib by 2 and other direction also ib by 2 like that how many bars are there okay per pole that is nothing but bars per pole with respect to one particular conductor we are seeing ib by 2 in a n ring with respect to the n number of bars per pole that is nr by p this is the total current that's what we have derived here okay end ring current is equals to ib into nr by p into 2 so this is the i uh, bar current sorry end ring current with respect to the maximum bar current and the maximum end ring current with respect to the maximum bar current and area of the end ring and area of the bar we can calculate it with this i am concluding this lecture in this lecture we have discussed the how to calculate the bar current and how to calculate the end ring currents in the next lecture we will discuss about the slot geometry of the rotor core thank you